Hey y'all and welcome to Carbon Scoring and my secret lounge where I display all my favorite action figures from a lifetime of collecting. I'm really happy with my display, but it didn't always look like this. In fact, not long ago, it looked much more like this. Certainly still an impressive collection of figures, but it was dark, dingy, and cold. It wasn't the best use of space, and there wasn't enough variety or dynamism to the displays. So how did I transform this into this? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to share all my tips and secrets so that you can maximize your display and get the most out of your collection. So the very first thing that you need to display your action figures is a space to display your action figures, and you're going to need some form of shelving. In my secret lounge, I went with custom built-ins because each of these different nooks and spaces was slightly different in size, but certainly you can use any number of things from floating shelves attached to a wall to common bookcases to display cabinets like the Detolfs from Ikea. I used three Detolf cabinets combined together to display various items in my Clemson room. And yes, I have a toy room and a Clemson room. And also, yes, I married the perfect girl. But back to the shelving. I think it enhances the look to have different forms of shelving to highlight different types of displays. Here you can see I have deeper shelving with a mirrored back in the recessed nooks, along with a more narrow unit in the center, which allows for showcasing smaller collections. The glass shelves are all adjustable, and I think that's a big improvement over the heavy wood shelves that I was previously using. The glass certainly creates a lighter, airy feel. But don't feel limited to simple bookcase type units. I used a four-tiered shelf open on all sides for my G.I. Joe display. This allows for these toys and play sets to be viewed from multiple angles. Try to take advantage of every possibility that your space provides. This lets you view the flying ships as you come down the stairs, then gives you a full view into the headquarters. I had to get creative for the center of the room. Originally, there was one chunky rectangular display supporting the Lego Millennium Falcon. It was eye-catching and it made a nice work table, but as my collection grew, I knew I needed to utilize that space much better. My solution was to get creative. I designed a circular four-tiered open display, each level only supported by the exterior columns, allowing for maximum viewing from every vantage point. Where my previous centerpiece was a rectangle, and I have numerous scars from banging into the sides of it, this circular design allows for much easier movement throughout this tight space. The glass shelves not only help let light get through to all the different levels, but they also add to the look that the ships are suspended or in flight. By making this change, I was able to go from only being able to display one Lego ship to now being able to showcase my entire collection. And finally, I have a custom wall hanging display cabinet designed to showcase the Star Wars Vintage Collection. So shelving plays a huge role and is the foundation of any action figure display. I actually spent months graphing out my space trying to utilize every square inch to its best potential. Don't be afraid to think outside the box and utilize unconventional shapes and spaces. Always remember, it's your collection and it's meant to be fun. I can think of no single factor more important in taking this to this as lighting. There are so many lighting options available now that are easy to install and incredibly inexpensive. Let's take a look at some of the basics. The original Secret Lounge was lit predominantly with track lighting. Simple overhead lighting created too many downward shadows and made it impossible to see into the displays or really to see anything at all in the lower half of the room. Track lighting allowed for adjustments and focuses of beams of light into the shelves, at least making it possible to see all the figures. I'm still using the track lighting, but watch this. What a difference LED strips inside the cabinets can make. Let's take a look at a specific example. Here is my old Toy Biz Spidey shelf. It is so dark and dingy in there that there is literally mold growing on that 12 inch Mego figure in the corner. Here are essentially the same figures, but with LED lighting. The colors are bold and each figure pops in this display. LED strips can be attached to the undersides of shelves to provide downward lighting as well. Two more huge factors impacting the lighting are the use of glass shelves and mirrored backgrounds. 
The glass shelves allow for even the lowest collection to be lit as brightly as the ones at eye level. And the mirrors not only provide an illusion of greater size and depth to the space, they also reflect light back out into the center of the room. I was careful not to go overboard with the mirrors and only use them in the four corners. Some collectors want to display every single action figure they own. And hey man, that's totally cool. But for me, that's just not possible. That's where editing and curating come in. In my original Secret Lounge, I tried to cram every Star Wars figure I had onto the shelves. It became a scrambled, garbled mess, and the identity of the individual figures was lost. Now, I switch my Star Wars display over to only the 12-inch Hot Toys. That way, each unique character has a chance to shine and be seen. Editing your collection also helps influence the design of your display. I knew that my complete sets of Secret Wars and Superpowers figures needed a place of honor, but neither of these sets alone was large enough to carry an entire bookcase shelf. Also, smaller collections like Speed Racer and G-Force really stand out on a shelf, but when mixed in with tons of other figures, they lose their unique look and design. So the process of editing and curating my collection led to the decision to display two sets of shelving designed specifically to enhance smaller displays. Then comes the problem of duplication. I probably own over 100 unique Wolverine figures, but there are only four in the entire Secret Lounge. And that's because I'm not the world's biggest Wolverine fan. When it comes to duplication, you have to decide which characters in your display warrant multiple representations. I love my Iron Man armory, and this goes with the character, but even this doesn't represent every Iron Man figure that I own. But then there's my favorite, Spider-Man. Not only are there hundreds of Spidey and his amazing friends on display, this takes up the center shelf for the entire room. For me, this is important. This is the character that I am choosing to spotlight. And even though this is curated as well, all of these Spideys make a statement about where my priorities are. So know what you like. Transformers are cool, but Jazz was the first one that I owned, so he gets multiple figures represented. The key to curating your collection is knowing what to put out before you even get started. I drew maps, graphed out checklists, and watched numerous videos before I put the first figure in place. I also like for my display to tell a story. As you move around the room, there are themes and shelves organized by when the toys were released. For example, when you move from my classic Lego shelves, representing the sets that I collected in the late 70s and early 80s, you transition over to 70s and 80s space and sci-fi collections, including things like Buck Rogers, Battlestar Galactica, The Black Hole, Robotech, Starcom, and finishing with that glorious beeping bastard, ROM. The point is, there's nothing random in my display and it required extensive editing and curating of my collection to get it that way. So you have your space in your shelves, you've set up your lighting to maximize your figures, and you've edited down your collection to exactly who you want to show. How do you make each display stand out? Well, I'm here to help. I have gone through enough failed displays to fill a trash dumpster. Uh, trust me on that. Perhaps the single biggest key to a dynamic display is making sure all of the figures can be seen. For this Transformers collection, it's pretty easy. The figures fall nicely into three different height tiers, and it's easy enough to place the tallest in the back and then move forward. But with other collections, such as here with DC Universe Classics, all of the figures are basically the same size. So to balance my display, I use custom clear acrylic risers that I had made at a local plastics manufacturer. But you don't need customs. There are plenty of risers available on Amazon. In the past, I've used those white kitchen risers, but now I avoid those. I prefer the clear acrylic to allow light to shine through and to keep the focus on the figures and not the risers. But you don't want every display just to be stair steps. I've tried to vary mine by using backdrops, such as this Hall of Justice with the animated DC figures, or even the FF symbol mounted to the wall behind Marvel's first family. And while I usually like to keep my collection separate, there are exceptions, like here, where pulp heroes like the Rocketeer, Buck Rogers, and Indiana Jones are all hanging out. Or here, where DC and Marvel Captain Action figures from the 1960s come together. I think it can be cool to mix your collections as long as they share a common theme. Please don't ask me what this theme is, just appreciate its complete and total badassery. But what if you're looking for more movement in your display? What are some ways that you can pose your toys 
but still put the action in action figures. I tried to create a sense of movement with this Ant-Man by using progressively smaller figures to simulate his shrinking action. It worked pretty well. And here I have the Silver Surfer on a custom designed flight stand so that he appears to be soaring the spaceways. I've used several tricks in this X-Men display. There are a layer of characters on the ground floor, so to speak, in the front, all centered around Professor Xavier. Professor X has a custom psychic effect attached to the back of his head from an online customizer. Then, there's a second row of figures on medium risers peeking over the shoulders of the front line. The Colossus on the second row is actually from the Diamond Select line, and is technically out of scale with the Marvel Legends, but here, that extra height allows him to fit in perfectly. In the back, I have our flighted X-Men, all at different levels to avoid a static feel. Finally, on the Tall Riser, I have the old Toy Biz 5-inch classic X-Men box set, standing in front of the gates to Professor Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, which came as pack-ins from old Marvel Select toys. The fact that the Toy Biz Classic X-Men figures are slightly smaller keeps them from overwhelming the entire display. Also, having that classic angel as the highest elevated figure creates a symmetrical pyramid and balances everything nicely. All of these supplies are readily available. Several different companies make adjustable flight stands for action figures. And as I mentioned, you can order a variety of acrylic risers off of Amazon. I really like these because they're small, they're cheap, and I can use them in multiple ways. I think there are four different types of risers on this Spidey villain shelf alone. But hey, get creative. Here I shaped a coat hanger to get Shang-Chi off the ground, and I pulled a similar trick to make Dupe appear that he was levitating. When it comes to getting your figures to stand in place, base plates make a huge difference. These were designed to go with classic G.I. Joe figures, and it's easy to find ones for vintage Star Wars as well. But most of your figures aren't going to fit into those categories, so I found that the best solution is to take hot glue and attach your figures to clear plates that are readily available. Don't worry, the glue won't damage your figures, but it's strong enough to hold them in place, but it's not so strong that you can't just peel it off with your fingers. Now I haven't forgotten you mint on card collectors. While 99% of my toys are loose, I have tried in the past to display my carded figures as well. What a mess! Toys stacked on top of toys, poor spacing. This is a pretty great example of how not to do it. But I've learned some lessons. I've decreased the amount of figures. I've varied up the sizes of the packaging using some of the Gentle Giant 12-inch reproductions to make it look like you're walking into a Toys R Us when you enter my secret lounge. Speaking of entering the secret lounge... Yeah, I totally had a hidden bookshelf door installed. So there you go. All my tips and tricks to getting the most out of your action figure display. Hopefully you learned a little something, and if you did, leave us a comment. And if you're picking up what we're putting down, hit like, hit subscribe, and help us grow the channel. We tend to focus on the intersection of comic book history and the action figures inspired by them, so if that's your thing, come join us. Until then, we'll see you on the next Carbon Scoring.